Yes, just give them up. 10 seconds to come back or whatever. All right. Tom said give them a couple seconds. Hopefully they'll rejoin the program. If not, what can I tell you? Why wouldn't they? If we got someone on the phone, what are they going to do? Play another boring commercial? Right. We'll, we'll, we'll pan the next one. Yeah, we'll figure it out down the road, but we're back live with the Opie and Anthony Show. And on the phone, we got Sylvester Stallone. Mr. Stallone. Hi. How are you, sir? Very good, thanks. I don't, I don't feel good calling you Sly or Sylvester. Why not? No, no. Live on the, live on the edge. I call him Double S. Double S. That's what I call <laughs> like him, baby. Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> hero, to, hero to both blacks and whites. One of the few, Schwarzenegger, yeah. one, Sly the other, and uh, it might Bruce be one Lee. more. Bruce Lee. Hero to all. Lock up. And Rocky Three, my two favorite movies. Oh, thank you. Hey, you are uh, you call from Los Angeles or you're in New York? I just got to New York last night. Oh, okay, uh, so you're not, at least you're not at five o'clock in the morning time. No. Yeah, you know what? There is something to that. You're right. <laughs> I'm actually looking at your at your bio, and it's amazing to me that like 16 years after the last Rocky, you did Rocky Balboa. Um, was that your choice, or did the studio want you to do it? Like, why, why did you decide to redo one after such a long uh, layoff? Well, truthfully, the studio was completely opposed to it. That's why it even took. Uh, that, I would have done it ten years later, but you know, times change, the paradigm changes, the administration changes, and the whole outlook of the business changes, and it became much more what we call a tent pole industry, where you'd make very, very large commercial films, a la Spider-Man. And the smaller kind of films. And Rocky was kind of like an independent film that caught on. <clears throat> and the fact that I wanted to play it at my age didn't exactly uh, send off rockets in their heads. You, you know what, though? I, I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. And I watched it. And I thought you did a really great job with it. I love the direction it went into. It was like a really, uh, it was a believable storyline. I mean, it wasn't a guy coming back and just knocking out all these young yeah. contenders. It was great. Exactly. I thought if, if you made it an exhibition fight, it would be plausible. But more importantly was, uh, can you hook on to his dilemma? Mm -hmm. and if you can, then you have a story. What was his dilemma? Well, you know, you're, you've lost everything in your life, things that really, really matter. How do you go on to the second half of your life knowing that you, you've you lost the things that have been most precious to your love, your wife, your child? Can you find some kind of enthusiasm that sparks a, an interest to keep moving forward? Wow. Now, 20 years later, uh, you're releasing uh, uh, the Rambo, which is just called uh, John Rambo, or is it just called... Well, it was going to be called John Rambo, and then we started, we wanted to be clever and go, like, oh, why not to, like, to Hell and Back or Up Blood River, and then it started sounding like a, you know, a, a, a serial film. Then the, John Feldhammer runs Lionsgate says, why don't we just do something that's, I just call it Rambo, and even though we've had a movie called Rambo, I think there's been enough time in between to... You can't mistake that. Now, what, who, what's going on with the, uh, you remember the Andre the Giant stickers they used to have around? No. Remember that those Andre the Giant faces? It's just a drawn face of Andre the Giant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you got like this, that, that thing going on in the streets. Like, oh, you got the like, Rambo. It's just that drawn. Yeah, it's, it's his face just stamped on yeah, everything. Yeah, just kind of. Kinda, as Rambo. What is that about? Is that, well, like you know, some... guys, that to me is, uh, that, that came from um, Lionsgate, a man named Tim Palin, and I, and I think it's, it's actually genius. I never would have expected it. They've taken a regular photo and sort of reduced it to like street art, and it's so, so I don't know, uh, obvious from a long distance away. And then I said, you know, why is this catching on subconsciously? You know, it looks like the Che Guevara. Right, 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 right. And which is still burnt into well, people's brains. Well, Andre the Giant and stickers. All right, I, I don't remember the Andre the Giant. It's, the, I don't it's just, just around. You know what I mean? All right, all right. You. I'm, I'm waiting for Cliffhanger, the 20th anniversary one. Oh, man. You're be waiting a long time. <laughs> <laughs> this time he gets a job as a window washer. Yeah. <laughs> one of the, Sly, that Cliffhanger was a great movie, man. One of the best opening scenes oh, ever shot God. was you hanging off that uh, that rope, uh, holding her hand and looking down. That Wait a was, minute. Was yeah. he disgusted with Cliffhanger? No. Is wanna... No, it's just probably who wants to hang it. And no, no, that... no, no. I mean, uh, Sylvester Sly, Sly, like, is, were you... It, is that one of your favorites, or is that oh, one of your no, least favorites? One of my favorites. Yeah. No, I'm saying the, the idea of going through that, that those heights and the, the hardship. And I mean, I'm not a height person. Right. And after a while, you just can't take it anymore. You say, you're going to work 12,000 feet in the air every day. So you were doing like a lot of rock climbing and stuff yourself, right? Well, to a point, yeah, because you, you have to, you know, but something happens when you're doing films like that, and a lot of mountain climbers said it to be true. After about a month, you, you go up there, you're terrified. Then after about a month, you find yourself 
going closer and closer to the edge, turning your back, eating your lunch, hanging over the side, and it just it just pushes man's ego to see how far you can go before you fall to your death. Wow. All right, sir. Now here it is. Now don't take offense. I just need to know. All right. What is the backstory of Viagra Rambo? What is that? <laughs> the old man Rambo. The twenty year later Rambo. Not you, but oh, the oh, but yeah, the yeah. the dude. Who's like 20 years from the last dude who fought the Russians? Exactly. Well, he goes back to Thailand. He lives on the border of Burma. And I've seen, I, I, I perceive this guy as kind of moving back into the jungle, almost becoming animalistic because he doesn't communicate with humanity anymore. He's lost his faith in God. He's lost his faith in humanity. But he's very, very strong, very brutal, very powerful. And he's a river man, he's a boat man, and these people have to get into Burma, these missionaries, because they do this truthfully every year. And the only way to get in there is upriver because all the mines, all the trails have been mined. And that begins the adventure where Rambo now starts to feel a rekindled connection with humanity. But I, I think I was in the best shape I've been in a long time for that. But I wanted to be not a bodybuilder look, but more of a, a working class, hard, hard man, like a lumberjack. You mean more like the original Rocky where you were big and strong yeah, yeah, but not exactly necessarily right. cut. Right. Exactly right. Exactly right. And as we accomplished that. So the audience would say, oh, okay, this is believable. Uh, but it's not it's not vain and it's not self conscious of trying to look vascular and all that sort of stuff. And, and you're 60 years old, right? 61. Wow. 61. Amazing. Holy man! Don't, don't amazing. keep me out of that one. Did you ever? All right. <laughs> and that's why I call it Viagra Ram. I mean, it's just like you know, I'm not no. Jeez, I'm just joking. It's amazing. Now, now, okay, we was just talking about like all this the the stuff we was just talking about the racial stuff or whatever. Now, if I, remember in Rocky, in Rocky, not in Rocky, Rocky Five, uh, not Rocky Five, Rambo, First Blood Two, or First the, and that girl, and the pretty girl that was like Wambo, Wambo, and the uh, we, girl. we ridiculous is uh, are they gonna have be having that kind of stuff now? Or are the are the people in the movie like you know we got a we're Vietnamese and we you know there's none of that. <laughs> no, Wambo, you know, we, we decided to be as truthful as we can in this. Good. So we actually hired. Because the, the worst situation in the world right now, the longest running civil war and the bloodiest is in Burma. It's been going on for 60 years. So the hardest thing was to get Burmese refugees to play themselves because they're still terrified because the Burmese secret police are always coming over the border trying to pull them back. So we, we didn't get into... Um, you know, casting for just, you know, a shock effect. We stayed pretty much with the real people over there. So it's mostly Burmese and myself and uh, this group of Christian missionaries from, let's say, Colorado. One of I'm going to guess one of your favorite things, one of my favorite things that you ever did, and I think it took a lot of people off guard, was when you did Copland, uh, the type of a role you played there, which was kind of like this, the guy who doesn't necessarily win. Exactly. Uh, um, is that something that you would uh, would, would do more of? Because it was really great to see people like like if you forget like oh yeah this guy's like not just doing action movies but he's you know he's a real actor and he's you know people kind of I think lose sight of that sometimes with the action stuff. Well, you know that's that call it falls under the category careful what you wish for. I love doing ensemble work. There's nothing to me that's more pleasurable. So when I did that, I thought it would open up different avenues, and because the, the, everyone always says, oh, the most important thing for an artist to do is stretch. So we stretched, I stretched my waistline, I stretched mm -hmm. everything, but actually it, 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 it hurt me. Did it really? And yeah, it did. It really did. It, and so people said, oh, he's not into action films anymore. He's doing character work, but uh, we the audience doesn't perceive him as that. So all these mixed messages were sent and truthfully guys that was the beginning of the end for about eight years that's too bad because you were great in that yeah, movie yeah it's like I, I know it broke my heart too <laughs> but, but, but your boy your boy that's what he, his mo was he was he is famous for that um uh al pacino not al pacino yeah, yeah, robert was, de niro he got famous for just losing weight and getting fat and his whole the thing. difference is guys is that <clears throat> if you're connected to a character especially first you know right out of the box like rocky so tightly connected to it, where Bobby never had that. He was more more versatile, and he, he would do a variety of parts, but not be connected to one. You, you, that pretty much follows you around. But when, you, when you're stuck with that, which is a blessing in one way, and sure. in another, you're not going to get rid of it. Even if uh, to this day, if you say Typecast. James Bond, exactly. you still think Sean Connery. Right. So you're thinking like 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 an example with De Niro <laughs> is the amazing transition from Raging Bull, and then the next film is The King of Comedy. Right. 
Whereas you, 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 you kind I of. I couldn't pull that off. But do you like as as just as a performer because you are Stallone? I mean, you pretty much obviously will will turn down scripts all day until you find something you like. I mean, no no one is going to tell you what you have to do. do. Do you kind of find that like I want to have the commercial success more, or is something like that you'd be satisfied with like that like a cop land more important to you? Well, therein lies a big dilemma. You'd like to do the artistic. Uh, pieces, but then again, you do want to also reach as many, I think, of the public as possible. So, I would, I would opt more now for doing populist films, say like a Rambo, things that will go out there and have the, the widest audience. Because I, I, I've had my opportunity with Copland, and actually, the first Rocky was not an action film at all; nope. it was an ensemble piece. So. I, at this point, I don't want to experiment anymore. If something really that touches, like, for, for example, Edgar Allan Poe is one I want to direct. I can't beat it because I'm too young, and, and I don't think people hearing Yo Poe would, would work today. Sorry. Was there, hey, was there, was it, was it, was there ever a point where you really tried to go to some class or something to not be you? Like, to not, was there ever an attempt for you to just try your best to not be you, the, yo, Rocky. Yeah, you know, it, it, well, I, I, in college, you, you almost see the dais cast. Uh, I, I would go off like many other actors, and, but I was always cast in a certain role. There's a perception of body type, the sound of your voice. So I was always the villain, the mugger, the fellow from the dark side, the, the, uh, the friend that your, you know, parents don't want you around. And that just blossomed out. And so when I came to New York, the first couple of roles I ever got, I was like, let's go mug Woody Allen. Then you mug Jack Lemmon. Then you're the thug here. I'm going, With the Lords of Flatbush. Lords of Flatbush. So I thought, why don't I write a part about a guy who's a thug, but underneath the leather, underneath the hat, there beats a different kind of heart. And that's the beginning of Rocky. You was, he wasn't that in Tango and Cash, though. <laughs> but you know what? I played the wrong role. I nah, should've. man, Tango and Cash, that was no, it. I should have played the Kurt Russell role, let him wear the glasses. And I, and I apologize. <laughs> I'm I sorry, I really good. enjoy what people would call your other movies. Like, I mean, like Rocky, to me, we argue all the time. We argued here before. Rocky Three, I'm a black dude, by the way, is my favorite Rocky. And, I, and we argue that, but I think Rocky One is everybody's mostly favorite. But yeah. I love Lock Up. Tango and Cash, Rocky Three, I, I Night like Hawks the other one, Nighthawks. Nighthawks, sure. Yeah, but I do. My, the Rocky, my favorite, is one, uh, the last one in three. Do you know what I love about Rocky? When you watch the original Rocky, because obviously it was a lower budget than the other ones, when you, when you pan into the audience a little times, you'll actually see at times empty seats during the championship fight. Just just the nature of doing like a, a film before you're so known, and then you see part two and you watch those scenes, and, you know, and, and, and there's not an empty seat in the house. I know it was so true. We were have we would have people people brought in, and we couldn't get any volunteers, and they were going to people, you know, uh, I guess homeless. You would get local people on the street, anyone you can get, and they would only stay as long as the free lunches and the chicken boxes. <laughs> Once that ran out by noon, they're out you're of there. Playing to a house full of crickets. Yeah. What's that? I was. I wanted someone to know if he still talked to oh. Carl Weathers and. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you still? I mean, it's a kind of a corny question, but it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. we can we become kind of invested in these characters after all these years, and you associate <clears throat> Rocky with Apollo Creed. I mean, yeah, you I, assume they hang out every holiday, you know? No, not really. You know, I see Carl <laughs> now and then, and uh, he's walking down the street in Santa Monica. Hey, how you doing? But it's strange. A lot of actors don't maintain any kind of relationship. We all sit there and exchange phone numbers and say, you know what, we're going to be buddies forever, it's called, and have the kids be grow up together. And then by the time you get home, amnesia. Yeah, I guess so. You move on to the next project, and they move on to the next yeah. project. Yeah. And uh, what is, is there anything you, you regret doing? Like, I mean, you've had a tremendous career. Is there anything that you look back and you're like, maybe I don't wish I didn't do that, but I kind of wish I did that. And different. a turn down role, ask about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, anything anything you turned down. down. Yeah, sure, I, yeah. I was going to do Coming Home, Witness, Romancing the Stone. I mean, there's, wow, there's, there's wow. many of those, and I'd end up, you know, interestingly, uh, you, you sometimes are very, very open to suggestion, and, you, and I think people have to listen to their, their really their inner instincts in their heart. I, the, half the films I've done today, I would look at today, at today if they were presented, and say, <laughs> obviously, this is a cruel joke. I should be serious. <laughs> All right, they're telling us uh, he's got to go. He's uh, he's got a very busy schedule today. Well, the movie I, is obviously. Uh, where's my stupid one sheet? It Rambo. Is, uh, it is Rambo. It's in theaters next Friday, which is January the twenty fifth. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. I think it's the best action film I've ever done. Uh, will you be alive by the end of the film? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, actually, that's the next movie is we try to bring Ram- Rambo back from the dead. <laughs> bring back from the yeah. dead. Uh, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Dot com and uh, you know it was it was really a thrill talking to you. We're really happy Absolutely. that we were able to call in. Appreciate and, it. And uh, you continue success. Good luck with the film. Yeah, same to you. Take care. Uh, thank you. Bye. Same to uh, us. Cool our film. It was cool though. It's amazing. Like I was. Actually, it was great. Like you expect a big star like that to not be conversational. It's like, oh yeah, he's Stallone. He's comfortable. Very cool. Very cool. We just he gets carpal tunnel syndrome pulling back that arrow in this one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you, fan. We uh we just talked to Rocky. That's yeah, that's, great. that's pretty damn impressive, man. Yeah. All right, we got to take a quick break to the affiliates because we're a mess.